Okay. Alright, go ahead and uh, do some sprints real quick. Alright, someone time this. One, two, three, four, five. Oh, world record for the 100 meter sprint. Alright, now back to the speed run. We're heading to the boss for this chapter, Mr. Uh, Mendez. Of course, you don't see him as we skipped all the cutscenes. Wait. You can leave Ashley there. Whenever there's a cutscene that you approach in the area, then she just automatically shows up next to you, so we don't need to worry about her being right next to us all the time. So this is Mendez, he's the final boss of this chapter, and he has a really large, really big weakness to uh, to fire. So we take advantage of that by grabbing all the all the incendiary grenades we need. Film before without firing a single shot. I'm so sorry. I know this is shots fired, but we're gonna have to change the name to Grenades Thrown. But yeah, that's the quick kill. That works on pretty much every difficulty. 30 FPS, we need to use 5 grenades as opposed to 4. Um, so it's a little bit slower. But uh, still manageable because there's plenty of incendiaries throughout the first two chapters. So we're about to be done with the first area, um, the village area, and about to approach the castle area of the game, which is the second location, sec second out of three locations we visit. The castle area is probably the more difficult area of the game. Um, each area can it has kind of like a defining trait to it. Um, chapter three and four, which is in the castle, with like your RNG depends area, uh, specifically certain enemies that show up. Um, chapter 5 would be all about execution, as there's not a lot of RNG. And then chapter 1 and 2 are kind of like a mix of them. Wait. But, uh, first we gotta, Wait. gotta fight the truck boss. Wait, can I do this? Can I do this? Oh no! Oh no! Got it. Can't drive a truck if you have no head. Wait. You know what I mean. But yeah, we're gonna leave Ashley there and speaking to the whole cutscene thing, regardless of where she is, it'll automatically trigger and bring her back to us. So it's kinda nice. Wait. Uh, Ashley kinda gets up on our nerves, so an urban eye behind kind of helps us. Uh, <laughs> trying to remember what to sell, what to buy in a while. Oh, yeah, I was supposed to sell this. Oh. Uh, <laughs> Thank you. Alright. <laughs> Easy to forget about how to manage your inventory if you haven't done this in a while. But uh, So what I did, I sold the handgun and the shotgun. I picked up a semi-automatic rifle, which is one of the more powerful weapons in the game. You get a lot of automatic headshots with it. And the TMP, which I'll talk about shortly. <laughs> nice. So we're gonna kill that guy. Um, this area is composed of a lot of it's like catapults with flaming barrels. Um, by killing that guy, that lets us do the puzzle up here without any interference. Wait. Follow me. So if you remember, Psycho Ripper talked about how every Resident Evil has to have a crank. Well, here's the first one of this game. Fortunately, we don't pick it up as an item, but it's just there ready for us. 
I'm gonna leave Ashley there so she gets picked up by that guy and he ignores me. Oh my god, what is this guy? Okay, bye. Never seen that guy run up at me. But um, using the, the cannon here to blow up that uh, wall just makes all the enemies spawn, including the one that was holding Ashley. Follow so, me. Job, Ashley, you use it. you're useful. Wait. There and go up here. Then we're gonna run out and set the room. So all the enemies are still upstairs and they don't bother us. So now we have the TMP. Um, TMP is very useful. Uh, you have a Wait. lot of ammo for it, and you can use just a single shot, regardless of how weak it is, to stagger enemies, which you can set about for kicks, for just running past them while they're staggered. Or in this case, cut up. We're gonna go ahead and blow up this barrel. Oh, hello. Let's say that happens very often. That's why I have all these green herbs. Sometimes those enemies can come through the door, grab me. Most of the time they'll be on the other side of the door, so I just kick it. But uh, not today. No, also Ashley opens up doors for us like that. Leaves us a a second or so to open it ourselves. Ashley, good job. So here's a little bit of a new strat that's been that was come up with. I don't know who actually did, but um, wait, it was a fair amount of time. So we're gonna leave Ashley right there instead of making her follow us like she normally does. Go ahead, and ignore her for a while. As long as I don't have to reset this, the strat will work. And then I head down here and fight uh, Wolverine in his later years. So we have to kill Wolverine by shooting this thing on his back five times. Oh shit. I missed a shot there. I'm just gonna play it safe and kill him right there. I have to reload unfortunately, but what can you do? So we grab that. Was it Koro? Okay. So we're gonna run up here. And these guys are gonna be right here. Normally we have to shoot these guys. But uh, today we're gonna use Ashley to draw them back towards her and then just grab her while they're slowly working towards her. So it saves us a rifle shot and a lot of time if I didn't have to reload right there. Um, and plus it's a kind of cool strat. So this is the water hall. One of the most infamous areas in this game. One of the most reset areas that it's run to. Uh, this area is swarming with enemies, and to get through, we have to use surprise another crank. Um, and we have to protect Ashley while she's uh, using the crank too. There's a lot of different patterns that can happen here, and there's really not many, not really many safety strats. So I'm gonna stand next to this door so no enemies come in. Oh my god, Ashley, come on. Dude, Ashley, what are you doing? Okay, I'm just gonna run out and let Ashley come here. Come on, Ashley, let's go. Oh, this is such an awful haul. But I'm not dying. I'm just gonna go ahead and reset this water haul, because that was probably the worst thing that can possibly happen here. So, like I said, this is one of the most reset areas, just because of 
how random these enemies are. I've never seen that guy come in with the, the flail. Usually it's just one guy that just walks slowly towards her to try to grab her. But, uh... This is Resident Evil 4 speedrunning. And if you're not raging at it halfway through, then you're not playing this game right. So this is the guy that should be here, all by himself. I'm gonna run up here. Hit that guy. Hit that guy. Oh my god. I am gonna uninstall this game. <laughs> Alright, finally got to the crank. So now we gotta let Ashley do this crank while we wait for these enemies to run up. Oh my god, Ashley. This is ridiculous. Okay, we're good though. Alright, Ashley, let's do this. Oh my god. Dude, what the hell? <sighs> this game though. Get safety straps. Come here, Ashley. So these enemies didn't want to group up at all, and they just wanted to keep running around in random directions. But uh Wait, follow me. Look, there's a crank over there. Ah What a cancerous area. Fortunately, that's the harder part of this area. This is the rest of this is pretty cake. Now Ashley has to go around and use more cranks, and all we have to do is protect her. Um, as long as we shoot the the right uh, Ganado, then there's really nothing that can go wrong here. Lots of shots fired right there. Did it not? There we go. Like I said, the castle is a really random area where the majority of resets do happen for runs. You can try to be as safe as possible, but it's not going to always work out in your favor. I gotta shoot this guy so he doesn't hit Ashley. Alright, we're good. So one other shot that we used to do, I think I did it in my SGDQ run a couple years ago, is you can actually reset the water hall completely, and by killing certain enemies, you can just run up to the crank without anyone being able to your presence and use without any. It's pretty slow. It doesn't look cool. I'm more of a flashy player myself. I opted not to do that and just do the one cycle water hall. Alright, but now we just wait. And thankfully we lose Ashley for a good amount of time in this next, uh, for the next few chapters, so she doesn't really present a liability. Wait for her to show up. Come on, girl. This. And she'll get full get healed to full health. Um find her again. So I'm not too worried about healing her right now. But uh here we are, we are in chapter three dash two if you've been not keeping count. Um this area introduces a new type of enemy called the uh Novistador. Pretty much these uh super big insects that are invisible and can fly. Uh, these enemies are the reason why people don't play this video game or don't speedrun this game because just they're extremely random at what they can do. They can run faster than you and 
They can do stuff like that. I should not gonna heal. Grab this right here. Um, they can run through walls in a later area. How they can do that, I don't know. Uh, they can combo you to death. They get you in a bad position. Essentially, they kill your runs in a heartbeat. Fortunately, I only got hit by one of them here. Uh, it can go badly fast. So I'll, I'll take that after what happened in the water hall. Nice. Got the stop. Really, yeah, the real the real reason I'm doing this marathon run is to dissuade people from actually speedrunning this game. You might as well be just watching Super Mario Odyssey footage and trying to determine how to optimize the game before it comes out. This is the Red Zealot Room. This is another area that does differ from 30 FPS and how we have to approach it. 30 FPS we're able to use Incendiary Grade to uh, lock down the Red Zealot and kill him while he's stuck in his animation, but it doesn't work on this, unfortunately. So we have to kill him the old-fashioned way. Kill him, flash those enemies so it gives us plenty of time in order to get, get to this guy. Or shoot him down and get to him. Where are they gonna be? They're gonna be right over there, so I'm gonna have to run around them. Nice. Now for the hardest puzzle in the game. One, two, four. Puzzle took me way too long. I'm gonna skip that herb. I already have a good amount of heals right now. Never seen that guy do that. I reload right there because they can skip my animation if I get staggered, and I still get the reload off. Oh, these archers. There's too many enemies died. Thanks, fam. So those are kind of the harder areas in this chapter. The rest of this is pretty easy. Run this. Yeah, and world record for this game, for this category, is 129 something. That's by Morse. Only sub 130. Turn. But there's also the New Game Plus world record, which is one, either 118 or but uh, there's all these different categories since this game is imported to literally every console that's come out since the GameCube. Did I go the wrong way? <laughs> wow, I actually forgot where to go. So good at this game. But it is a maze. These mazes are tricky.
So these dogs won't hit me as long as I'm constantly moving. And if they ever run at me, all I have to do is run at an angle, they won't hit you. So they're pretty, like, they're not even scary at all once you learn how to dodge them. Alright, so that's chapter 3 too. It's chapter 3, which is the shortest chapter in the game. Um. shot one yes about to kick off on him the only thing I ever look forward in speed run being able to kick that guy I totally did that wrong, but it still worked out because I didn't take any damage. Alright, now we gotta save Ashley. Actually missing a, a rifle shot. Must have missed something, but thankfully I got the, the, double, the double lock shot right there, which you don't see very often. What's going on with the audio? It's not me, I swear. <laughs> the door's locked, I can't open it. I'm just playing this video game. So we knock down the red zealot right there and throw that grenade in that specific spot in order to uh order to do the big D. So now we're playing as Ashley, the only time in the game we're going to play as her. She really has nothing she could do except turn cranks and throw lanterns at people. Yeah, I can't make any jokes about Ashley's weight or I'll have like a wave of uh, Tumblr S SJWs talking about how I shouldn't make fun of a video character's model. Talking about how I shouldn't make fun of a video character's model. It did happen. It happened from SGDQ. I made a comment about Ashley's hitbox and I ate for it for some reason. But enough of that. So no joke, um, that's one of the hardest uh, puzzles, <laughs> in, in my opinion, in the game. I'm never good at those kind of things, but the actual solution to it is very simple. All you do is just move each tile around the edge, eventually get it. Ah! What happened? Is there something going on with audio that I need to fix? Okay, good. I feel like chat is really far behind, so I never know what conversation you guys are referring to. I'll do my but the end of the Ashley segment. But to top it off we have to do one more crank. 
really drive the point home that Ashley is complete in this run. She's only good at pushing things. So that's the end of chapter um, of chapter three, four, and now we're into four, one, which is the longest chapter in the game. This pretty much we go through the entirety of the castle, um, counter a lot of really crappy enemies, go through a lot of crappy rooms. Essentially, this is a chapter that we also reset a lot. This is a lava room. Um, clearly every castle needs a room like this with just lava everywhere. I don't know how it really works into the like the design of the castle or how it doesn't like destroy everything, but I don't know. I don't design video games. But uh, to get through, normally you would have to like shoot that guy that was on it on the side, but by shooting the little hinges that carry up the statue twice with the rifle, I will just quickly knock it down. Whoa, dude. Calm down. Oh, I didn't do the double weight. Oh. So sorry. Wait, follow me. Wait, follow me. Wait, follow me. I didn't, I can't do it now, unfortunately. Sorry, Demonio. Messed up. So this is the wall that we saw at the very start of the castle. Um, being able to skip this wall would allow us to pretty much just skip the entirety of chapter 3. And probably bring down close to 20, 25 minutes or so of this run. But you can imagine trying to skip something like that is equal to doing like a barrier skip. Although, we just have no idea how to do it. Wait. And also, what would a Resident Evil game be if didn't have statue pushing? There, so I can shoot these things. So we can avoid this trap completely by just shooting them before we it is a little bit of time because you can shoot yourself a lot easier, a lot better to shoot them down. Wait, follow me. And then all we have to do is shoot these guys once. And we're good. This next room is a little bit more tense. It's all about execution, except in the slightest thing. Wait. Wait. Very possible that you're gonna have to restart the whole room. So these are called armaduras, I think. I don't remember the exact name, but essentially they're plagas inside these huge suit of armors. Before we've had them in the QTEs where you just have to dodge them, but now we actually have to fight them. In order to kill them quickly, all we have to do is knock off their helmet. And... Knock off their helmet, 
um, by using a well placed headshot and then throwing a single flash grenade to kill all of them right away. So it's very easy to miss a shot, or even one of the shots to just not even register. Um, so you have to spend extra time that they're running at you to shoot them down again and hope not get hit by any of them. But well, that was actually really well executed. Yeah, I am playing at 60 FPS. It is streaming only. But, uh. Wait, follow me. I'm playing at 60. I'm gonna wait right here while facing away from them. Oh, crap. That's not what's supposed to happen. I think I actually didn't get close enough. So, when I face away from them, what that does, it makes them not throw their sights at me. Actually, a lot closer. Wait, follow me. And then, because I'm in that corner, then they're running towards that side. And they leave this huge opening there for me to run by. I just run straight through. So camera tricks are kind of uh, useful in this game. It allows us to dodge a lot of novice door attacks. Which I'm going to do a little right here. Unless, does it forces enemies to not... Oh my god, this game. <laughs> it forces enemies to not throw their shit at me. Throw this right here. Buy me a little bit of time to shoot these. So the, these are the second Novisa doors, which now they can fly at you. Um, it's pretty random what they can do. Fortunately, they're letting me through without an issue. But a lot of times, um, you'll have a bunch of them in the air, and there's no way to dodge them. They'll just fly straight at you and knock you down uh, repeatedly without you being a heal. But uh, there they kind of, everything kind of out. I apologize for the noise gate. Fortunately, I live in Hell's Kitchen, Arizona, where it's currently probably about 120 degrees outside. And I have to run my AC constantly in order to not just melt completely. Also, to keep my computer from overheating. Uh, point of the story is, don't move to Arizona. Oh my god, big dodge! Dude, look at this movement, it's so good! I, I, sorry, I can't be a hype, a hype commentator or anything like that. No, it's so hot here that airplanes are not even taking off because of because uh, there could be issues. Oh my goodness, what? So that's never happened before. Both of those guys are supposed to attack me at the same time, but they were just like, hell no. Even if they both hit me at the same time, that's perfectly fine. So I can still run past them, but if they try to... What the hell is going on in this area? Um, Resident Evil 4, everybody. So these are the, God the double God doors. For whatever reason, the God door that's on the left has a lot less HP than the one on the right. So even though we hit him with... Hit the one on the right with a direct rocket, it only kills the one on the left. And we just have to shoot him one more time with the sniper rifle. <sighs> Alright, and now we got the next big glitch of the game. Welcome. Got 
Okay, uh, I gotta remember what to sell. Sell that. What are you buying? Buy the striker. <laughs> Alright, so now I got the striker. This is a, pretty much like a riot gun. But the striker is the most important weapon in the game because it allows us to activate the dip mag glitch, which you can see I'm running pretty fast now. How this glitch works is you pull out the striker. As you raise it up, there's a short delay before you can actually fire and you switch to a different weapon before you fully raise it up and let you just literally turn into the flash. That's why we can't be able to beat this game kind of fast. And the striker hit me again. Well, I'm not going to do that anymore. It's kind of unfortunate that you did that uh, QTE again. So anytime you get stuck in a QTE, it breaks a uh, Ditman and you have to reactivate it. There's a lot of actions that do break it, so it's not just a permanent thing that happens. But uh, to kill this boss, all we have to do is use this uh, ice and then hit him with a rocket launcher, which instantly kills him. Verdugo, with that his name is Verdugo, has the highest HP in this game. Um, what you normally have to do in a casual run is either outlast him for five minutes until the elevator comes up, or you have to kill him, which is generally going to take all your ammo if you don't know about rocket launcher there. So pretty difficult boss made very trivial speed run. Sorry, this is the Flash's early years. Just learn how to run a little bit faster than your human being. Welcome. Buy another rocket launcher. Got what are you buying? <laughs> and we're gonna use this right away too. do this by shooting this right here. It knocks those enemies down and it lets me grab this uh, grenade right there. So here's a glitch that still works in, in 30 in, or still in 60 FPS. It doesn't matter what uh, frame rate you're playing at. Normally what happens in this area is you have to fight two gigantes at once. I would say that's going to take quite a lot of time. So instead of fighting them, we activate this uh, zip line twice. And then that forces us out of bounds. The reason why this works is the Dipman glitch. In addition to moving faster, it makes you do all animations quicker, such as using the um, pipeline or the zip line right there. Um, so we can use that to our advantage. Pick up two flash grenades here. This is the third area with no visa doors. Pretty much runs don't start until you get out of this area because it can go pretty wrong um, with what enemies do. Fortunately, it's going pretty well so far. Sometimes a lot of enemies show up right there and they just charge you and you have nothing you can accept. Just try to kick them out of the way and not get knocked down. Wow. This is actually really good. And right there, I got really lucky by being able to shoot all four of them down at once. Um, that lets me get through before any other Novisador show up at that entrance. Essentially, this area is all about, all about your timing. Any small action that wastes any time, it completely change up the pace of the room. You want to be able to get through, obviously, as quickly as possible, but you're also forced to go as quickly as possible in order to make sure you don't get hit by any enemy. Nice, that's good. 
That was a good third layer, pal. See, after that awful waterhall luck, the game is just kind of uh, going in my favor. I guess it just had to have one really bad area. And then once I get through that, then everything goes well. Equip this grenade. So what we have upcoming is typically a pretty long auto scroller. We have to ride, the, ride this uh, minecart through the ruins to get to the end in order to, to pick up a key item. But uh, we're not about that life anymore. I just got the door. So I threw the grenade there to, sh to blow open the door. That lets me just run straight through it without having to wait and shoot it down with anything else. I still equip the TMP just to be safe in case I missed it. But uh, but uh, when am I might. So here is the biggest skip in the game. So instead of you know, normally, you know, you jump down here, this uh, little switch, and you take a nice little ride through. Uh, it's a small world, but uh, we don't want to do that. We want to go ahead and skip it. Up here. And now we're out of bounds, and that lets us just run straight through the terrain, right to the very end. Fortunately, we have no way to descend, so we actually have to put ourselves back inbounds. Do that by running up here. And just running along the track. Yon's really getting a workout. Hear that, that breathe. So this is a glitch that you can only do on 60 FPS and was found uh, last year, I believe. Yeah, like January of last year. This really is one of the main reasons why the run brought down so much since days of Resident Evil 4 speedrun. So we just run straight across here. Go out of bounds again. Just run on thin, run on, run on air. Just run straight into here. That saves about four, four or five minutes over taking the minecart. So pretty important glitch for for speed running. Pretty cool glitch too. Alright, now we're on to the final chapter of the castle. This is a part I think people were referencing in chat earlier, just didn't know when it was. So I shot twice there to alert some of the enemies later on, like that guy. I think I messed this up, but whatever. I still got it. Nice. So that guy you see climbing the ladder right there? That's important. The first shot I did alerts him to my presence, so immediately he starts looking for a way to get to me. Otherwise, if we didn't um, fire an alert into our presence, then he's just sitting right there at the bottom um, ready to hit me. And of course we don't want that. Uh, 
Ah. Get arthritis from that section. There's so much mashing involved. So because we're in Ditman, we're able to run up the um, those corridors before. Oh wow happen before it um, actually the barrels come down to us normally you have to wait and hide but uh, now nah, bro speed run cool. so now we're on the elevator this elevator does have a mat max occup occupancy limit that forces the elevator to stop when there's any more than two people on it. So we want to shoot these guys down immediately. So we can just ride up a lot faster. We do that by positioning ourselves in a certain spot on the elevator. If you fire at the ground with this, then it just knocks them down at a certain angle. See the elevator stops right there. Fortunately, it shoot them down right away. So it didn't uh, knock them off in the correct angle. So we just have to kill him instead. You have another guy on here? Oh, he's still alive. Wow. Yeah, runs usually die a lot earlier than this. But that was a pretty smooth elevator. I'd say so myself. I'm gonna actually I forgot to do this earlier. Sell this crown and buy a rocket launcher. Welcome. Got some what are you selling? <laughs> what are you buying? What are you selling? Get rid of this too. Free up some space. <laughs> Come back. I have a lot of shotgun ammo, surprisingly. Okay, go for the nice. Got the first aid spray about activating the type rider. So this is a uh, Salazar. We're not able to skip him like we do in 30 FPS by running on air. So we just have to kill him instead. So if you notice so far, the rocket launcher is pretty much a pretty OP weapon. That doesn't cost much money at all. One shots pretty much every single boss in the game. Oh, thank you, Capcom. It's getting you. Making me have to fight Salazar. But uh, that was the last area for the, the castle. Now we're gonna move over to the island. Got some what are you buying? <laughs> Hot second. Yeah. Too many. I have way too many heals. Get rid of a couple of them. Now we move on to the island chapter. So this chapter is a lot dear in my opinion. Like I said, castle is more of like a RNG focused area. The island is more more execution based. You're not going to see a lot of things that really hurt your runs. Uh, it's just going to be entirely on your own personal skill. So normally you have to go to this, this uh, that one over there first to line this up so that way you can see the laser and where you have to aim it. But you can actually f determine where you need to aim it before you get there. So it saves you a bunch of time. 
Oh shit. That's gonna be bad. Okay, good, he didn't hit me. What I was supposed to do right there is uh, make him try to do a melee at me. But uh, he's having none of that. Alright, cool. Now I can just run straight up here. That worked out in my favor still. Oh, that guy was very close to grabbing me. There's a lot of differences between 1360 FPS. I'd say the biggest difference is that enemies move a lot faster and react a lot faster to you. So you're not able to do a lot of the same movement between the two frame rates. But there's a lot more to it than just that. Run through here. Oh, we can see me my favorite character in this game. Oven Man! See you, dude. Okay. Nope. What am I doing? So here we got this, uh, this doorway. Normally you have to kill all these enemies. Yeah, I mess up. Normally you have to kill all these enemies to pass it. Go ahead and let them throw that again. I'm gonna walk right here. And let... I'm not doing this right. Wait until I get it. What am I doing wrong here? There we go. Let me run over here in this corner. Then run through. Oh my god. <laughs> this game. Okay, let me run up here. Come on, do it. There we go. A few more attempts than I should have, but... It's so pretty hard to do on 60 FPS compared to 30. The window's a lot shorter to get through there. Yeah, we're. He's not streaming it in 60, it's in 30 right now. But I'm playing in 60 FPS on my side. Most people you see streaming the, the Steam version of this game will be playing 60 FPS, and you'll see the. Oh, whoops! <laughs> Isn't it assignment Ada? part's kind of annoying to get through because uh, I have a lot of muscle memory for one of the side, like, side mini games for this. And I'm so used to doing those that you don't do it like that in this. I'm gonna wait for this guy right here. That way he doesn't shoot at me while I'm passing him. I'm gonna go ahead and ignore Ashley a bit. Just keep walking through all this. So I'm not always doing Dipman in every possible area. There's some areas that it's just faster to run through, given that you have to go into the menu, the weapons set it up. I'm only doing it on the areas that I know that are faster to use it in. So 
So this is the Iron Maiden. This is kind of a mini boss as well. Dude has a ton of HP and does a ton of damage, but once again, rocket launcher is the goat. We use a flash grenade here. We have a lot of flash grenades that are coming up, so we can use quite a lot of them. Now we get Ashley back. Is he gonna need to get past these guys? What's this guy gonna do? Oh, thank you. So we're gonna go ahead and hit this, and we're gonna leave Ashley right here. This causes all the enemies to completely ignore me to Ashley instead. And I just run out here. And then it's one of those areas where you approach the cutscene, she just automatically shows up with you. What is that thing? Wow, good job, Ashley. I'll cut the note. So we have a Novista door, or sorry, Regenerator chasing us. But I'm just gonna go ahead and push these past that. I don't need to worry about him. I'll wait for him. Forward. Do his uh, overhand. Oh shit, that was close. Come on, dude. Oh my god, dude. There we go. He's supposed to do that like the first try. I don't know why it took him four. And then let's go this way. Here. So we're going to do another glitch. First step is to get rid of that flash grenade. So now I have an empty in my inventory. So I'm gonna run up here. I'm gonna use my knife. And we're gonna hold the fire button. And for whatever reason that keeps Ashley locked in position. Normally when she jumps down there's a cutscene that starts. But we can keep her up there. And then we'll go ahead and let her do the cutscene now. Look, there's a gate here. But however, that Ashley doesn't trigger the enemies, only Leon does. So now there's a whole bunch of enemies right on the other side of this wall that you can't see. But they don't know I'm right here. So that lets us just wait for this lever to keep coming up without having to fight them. And just makes this room a whole lot more trivial. Ashley here, so she holds up on the door for us. Thank you, Ashley. A gentleman. Follow me. Wait. This guy attacked me. Then run straight past him. And Ashley's gonna go crazy and walk through this wall. Ah, oh, it didn't work. Ashley, you messed up. Wait. Shotgun do I have? I have a lot of shotgun ammo. Leave it to me, Leon. Alright, now we got the boring part of this game. Our favorite auto scroller. Fortunately there's no way to skip this one. We just have to write it out. But what can you do? Behind us. And one neat little trick right here is that you can stand at the edge here and all the enemies think that you're next to them. So that stops them from running up here. When the truck is moving at least. When it stops I just have to let him jump up and then shoot him off. But 90% of the time when the truck is moving it allows us to avoid having to fight them off.
Some of them will still jump up. At the truck boss. Truck from chapter uh, 2 3, after much revenge. Forward up its windows this time, so we're not able to shoot out the driver. He's ready. He's not done just yet. So we're just gonna blow up the engine this time. He can't come back after us. I mean, he flipped. I don't know how he flipped with a truck that size and a tunnel that small. Managed to do it. Sometimes those two guys with the melee weapons run up at you at the same time. That lets you just stagger both of their attacks. Um, but if it doesn't happen, then you have to uh, just have to try to dodge both the second melee and the guy that threw, throws the hatchet. When I reset the checkpoint right there. A lot of times, resetting checkpoints in certain areas just clear out all the enemies that are in the area. There was one enemy that was jumping on the truck. Um, as I was jumping down, saw it. And if we just reset right there, it just disappear. We did the same thing in the water hall as well, after the cutscene, after the first part. Um, resetting the checkpoint lets you start at the same spot, but clears out all the enemies that were previously in there. A lot easier. <laughs> and say I've had that guy hit me. Let everyone jump on. So my goal is to not have any enemies on the truck. I mean part. Because they can run up and try to kill someone that's showing up fairly soon. And these guys can turn into plagas, which don't want to happen. So I'll let these guys jump up. Hopefully, I don't die. So the truck returns for its final revenge. We're just gonna go ahead and blow it up for the final time. Job team. But yeah, in that cutscene where the truck is going over us, it can actually. Those plagas can hit us. And that's a bad time for it. Actually, I don't think I need that. Welcome. Got a salad? What are you? Is that all? What are you selling? I'm just gonna sell nothing here. What are you buying? Buy a rock. Up. <laughs> Come back anytime. All right, so we're almost at the end of the game. We have. Two Full chapters left, just a short chapter. Um, like your bus, your boss rush chapter, back to back. Oh, one of my favorite chapters. But there's not potential happen, which is a recurring theme. Was evil. Here we got our first and only unskippable cutscene. Have ourselves a knife fight. I don't think there's any possible way to skip this. Go out of bounds to bypass the trigger. But there's no about doing it without some sort of like cheat tool. Krauser. 
died in the crash two years ago. Is that what they told you? You're the one who kidnapped Ashley. You got John Quick, as expected. After all, you and I both know where we come from. <laughs> What do you want? Buh. The sample said yeah, I apologize for any audio gone. issues. For whatever reason, my mic just decided to break before this run. So I had to start using my headset, which is pretty, qua pretty crappy quality. And plus, like I said earlier too, I have the AC constantly going because Arizona's hot as hell. You got her involved just for that? <laughs> so one nice thing about the PC version of this game is this cutscene in particular. It knows there's a series of inputs you have to put in at certain points. It's always going to be one of two inputs. And instead of waiting for it to show up, you can just mash them all at the same time. However, doing that in, in other versions, such as like the GameCube version, there's a little bit of delay between inputs that forces you to actually see what the input is before you input. Well, if it isn't the bitch in the red dress. Um, and if you don't do it fast enough, you die. So it's... <laughs> One nice benefit of PC is not having to worry about that happening. Here I could literally just watch chat the whole time, not even looking at what's going on, and just keep bashing the same in. Death, is it? You knew each other? More or less. Maybe it's about time you told me the reason why you're here. Maybe some other time. And Knuckles. So we're going to run through these lasers. If you don't stop being right there, you can just run through those first two without having to wait. Um, another thing in 30 FPS is you're able to run through the third set of layer lasers by switching weapons. You can't do that in 60 FPS, so we just have to do QTs. I have the next boss coming out right up here. Essentially, it's a, a movement based boss that we just have to keep getting through the area before we can actually kill. About the rocket launcher. Yeah, okay. Sure, I'm not. So my goal here is to not die this fight without being really good. Then jump right now. If I do keep right here. Oh no, he's gonna jump down too. Okay, this is good. Normally he would uh try to uh, hit you from the ceiling, and then that breaks your dip man. Hey. Wait for this guy. I'm just gonna play this safe. Sometimes he comes around that corner and does this instant kill that it's impossible to avoid. I just did not want that to happen. And instead of running all the way through this area, so normally what you want to do is hit that button, run through this while he's chasing you, get to the other side of this, and then um, hit the button. We're not going to do that. We're just going to throw a grenade through this in this little thing and hit the button itself right there instead of having to go through all of it then once we hit the button here then we already have the door open for us to get through
Now we get to kill him. So, once again, Rocket Launcher is OP. to the next area and buy our final set of items. Sell the team P. What are you selling? And all ammo I have left for it. <laughs> what are you selling? And I think yeah, just the ammo. What are you buying? And by the Killer Seven, which is Magnum <laughs> and Rocket Launcher. <laughs> Come back, yeah. So the Ditman glitch is named after the. Um, a game fax user that found it. I wasn't around during that time. That was actually very early. It's only been here about four years. But, uh, yeah. What a legacy. Most boring glitch in the game. Have people constantly reference you. So Krauser is interesting in that he has a lot of the same characteristics as most humanoid characters in the game, and that the knife stackers him. Just because he's a boss, it the game still follows that role. But I, skip, I reset the checkpoint there to force him into a position that's favorable to me, so he doesn't try to kill me. Got a whole bunch of herbs for this next area. Oh nice! Dude, sick. Probably the best thing that could happen. Alright, and then we got yet another statue puzzle. We're gonna use Dipman to push ourselves through it itself. And then... Come on, this should be it. Okay, not enough, unfortunately. Should be good. Oh, come on, this should be it. It looks like it. So you want to push this a certain distance, so that way you can just push it straight through here. If you push it too far, it gets stuck on this wall, and you have to push it all the way around. But if you don't push it far enough, then you're not, you don't get the actually show that direction. I'm picking up a ton of heal. Bye shortly. Also, shout out to these robots that just <laughs> randomly show up in this area and nowhere else in the game. Absolutely no introduction to them. Even the Novisadors at least have somewhat of an introduction to them. These are just like, okay, we're robots and we're here. And then bye, you never see them again. Now we're actually going to kill Krauser. This is one of my favorite shots in the game. For your death, Leon. So I talked about how the knife ha does a lot of damage to him and staggers him. Oh, whoa. Hello. Actually, just going to reset that. I don't know why he didn't jump twice. Prepare for your death, Leon. May have just been close to him. There we go. Jeez, what is he doing? This Krauser is not cooperating with me right now. I guess after all the good luck I've gone so far, then I had to up at one point near the end. Prepare for your death, Leon. Alright, Krauser. Do this right. There we go. So we're just going to keep him staggered in this corner. He's actually 
doing it kind of weird, but I'll take it. And we just kill him like that without having to fire a single shot. So I'm going to make a safety save here, and I'll tell you why in a hot minute. So this is one of the one of the most trouble scenarios in the game. There's just a lot of shit going down everywhere. Like that. You're guaranteed to take some damage in this area, whether you like it or not. But it's all just about speed, quickly getting through what how did I miss him? Uh, 5-4. Not really sure how that missed both of them. I mean, his shield is so big that it's impossible to... There you go. I'm starting to hit him. I'm gonna throw this grenade down here in order to uh, knock down all the enemies that are right there when you jump down again. I'll just to keep our dipmen up. Attack us, run past them. I'm gonna use a incendiary grenade. We want to take out all these turrets, so we're gonna use the incendiary to take out that one down there. Then we're gonna shoot the other two so they don't bother us at all. And this guy jumped down. So the goal of this area is just essentially don't take damage. You don't want to reset checkpoints if you can help it, because then it screws the pacing of it. But you also don't want to die, so play it somewhat safe. Oh, okay, good, no one's there. Alright, please. Please. Oh, thank god. So the reason I made a safety save there, and it actually just happened an hour before uh, that my run started, was um, there's a very high chance that the game will just crash at that door um, once you activate it. It's probably the most infamous crash um, in the run. It, it just happens there more frequently than any other um, area in the game. And we just don't know why that happened. It just, it just does. And for that to happen at the very end of the room, it's kind of, uh, kind of pretty disappointing. So, to be safe, just pick up the... I make that safety save, uh, so I don't have to worry about... So we're almost at the end. Uh, this is probably the less hard area. We have to get through, grab a bunch of key cards, activate a bunch of items. Um, a lot of enemies in this area, so it's a little stressful. Shoot this guy. Blow all those guys up. Up this key card. Always spawns off that guy, so there's no worry about it ever being anyone else. Wow, there's no one. Doing. Play it safe with this guy, I don't know what he's doing. Let him go. I don't want to kill too many enemies in here because otherwise JJ spawns. We use a lot of flash grenades to just stun enemies and get through. 
Alright, this is really clean. So, run's about the end, like I said. Um, we have a couple minutes, about three minutes left. Shout outs to Chad X for running this marathon. I've always watched it in the past, so it's finally great to be able to actually take part of it. Uh, shout out to all the RE4 runners in chat. Glad to see you and support our wonderful video game. And thank you for everyone who is watching, staying up a little bit later at night. Wait. Because without you, really good speedrun. Twitch viewers. Asking you guys agree. So this is the final boss. All we have to do is shoot his eye with the Killer 7, which is our Magnum, hit him with a rocket launcher, and then pick up the special rocket launcher. We don't even need to aim it, it just automatically hits him. As long as we're aiming in the general direction of where he's at. Yeah, but we do have one very important glitch at the very end that... Pretty much the most... Uh, other than Dipman, the most important glitch in the game. If you don't do this glitch, you just have to stop the run. Now continue at that point. So first off, we have to get Ashley back with us. So instead of having to wait for her, for her okay, I got it. We're gonna activate Dipman, activate the jet ski, and we're just gonna take off without her. So I still have Dipman active. If you're kind of noticing. Leon's model is somewhat inconsistent with how the jet ski is going, for example. And now, now it's back to normal, I believe, um, with that cutscene, but funny little thing to see. Yeah, I knew I was going to make an estimate. We had some issues that I just took a couple minutes to wait for it to work out. Plus, I've been trying to explain stuff rather than just trying to go fast. And time. So yeah, that was the Evil 4 New Game Professional. Uh, 60 FPS specifically. I don't really speedrun anymore, nor do I stream, so I don't really mind if people follow me or not because I'm not going to stream. But um, there are quite a few active RE4 runners if you're still if you're interested in the game that definitely should check out such as Arrow, Carpenter, chat right now. Other than that, uh, thank you everyone for watching. I believe next is uh, the co-op kindergarten run. Got who's run. But uh, that game's pretty wild. You should watch it. <laughs> oh damn. <laughs> 49 seconds overestimate. But what can you do? Alright, thanks for watching everyone. I'll see you guys in chat and enjoy the rest of the marathon.